You know, it's funny. Just yesterday, I was reacting to a video that showcased how hot it can get in the Philippines, right? And I was comparing it to how cold it can get in Canada and Montreal. You know, the two contrasts. Uh, and I was reacting while wearing a long sleeve shirt, you know, because it was still cold. But today, I'm wearing a t-shirt, man. It's 20 degrees. The temperature has finally risen. That's how you conjugate the word risen, the verb? I think so. I'm not 100% sure. So I'm so happy. I haven't worn a t-shirt while reacting in months. Uh, but, 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 we are here to react to a new video called American ranked the best English speaking country in Asia. Huh. So I'm guessing we're gonna see an American uh, listen to different uh, people from Asia, from different countries speak in English. And I guess this person is gonna judge the way they speak. I will also be giving you my opinion. Just remember, it's like music, right? It's very subjective. So what I'm gonna be sharing with you is uh, which English speaking Asian country sounds best to my ears and which one speaks English best, you know, like uh, grammar wise and stuff like that. Uh, if you are new to the channel, welcome! Maligayang pagbabalik sa akin channel. Ako po si Avila, I'm a sound engineer, beatmaker, and content creator on YouTube. And also, keep in mind that English is my third speaking language. Yes, I speak it fluently, but I wouldn't say that, you know, I speak it perfectly. You know what I'm saying? I still make mistakes from time to time. And because it is my third language, Sometimes it takes me a while to uh, come up with the right words, you know, and to remember the exact words that I want to be using while formulating a sentence. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, here we go. I feel like Philippines has a really good reputation. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm sorry to you guys. A stereotype of the Indian accent is helping you fix device. I'm sorry, sing all What? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not all of them, but I've heard a lot of different accents from a lot of different Asian countries, especially today. So to me, they all sound, for the most part, different. And just so you know, the uh, Asian English accents that I'm used to are Filipino, of course, because, you know, this channel is basically dedicated to the Philippines. And I also spoke to Filipinos in real life. Um, and I'll be traveling to the Philippines very soon. So I'm going to be immersed in Tagalog and uh, Filipino speaking English. So I'm very used to it. And I'm also used to uh, Indian speaking English, but the other countries, not so much. Today, I want to see if I can, we can figure out who is who. <laughs> At least by like the American standard, we don't really hold people to a standard of perfection, at least where I'm from. But I do notice that people from Asian countries, when they learn English, they try really hard to be, to speak it as perfectly, properly, as close yeah. to textbook English mm -hmm. as possible. That's what I've noticed a lot. You guys really study, study hard. <laughs> Ah, oh, like from the top, like who's the most fluent to like okay, who's wait. maybe like the rank top ten in Asian English. First rank of Asia English. Okay. Least. Okay. It's gonna be. It's hard. In my mind, number one, I feel like Philippines Woo! would be the highest. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> to you guys, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And I. I mean that makes sense because English is basically the first national language of the Philippines, you know, like English and Tagalog are basically on the same level, you know, they teach it in school, I think, you know, from a very young age, so it makes sense. And also because they kind of were 
kind of colonized by Americans at some point. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Americans say that they're the ones who uh, helped them or not even help them, they're the ones who booted the Spaniards, you know, from Spain, from uh, from the Philippines, who are really the ones who conquered the Philippines, right? So, yeah. I think number two would be India. Yeah. Number three, Singapore. Number four, Hong Kong. But like, honestly, to me, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Malaysia are so like, almost on the same level. Mm. Yeah, I think <laughs> maybe like three, Singapore, four, Hong Kong, five, Malaysia. Six, oh, Vietnam is really good too. Ooh, they study ooh, really well. So I mean, ooh. six. I'll be able to tell you because I will be traveling to Vietnam, you know, as well. Uh, so I'm gonna do Japan, Vietnam, and then the Philippines. Japan, I know that there aren't that many Japanese people that speak English, especially if you get out of the big cities. So Tokyo and Kyoto. Uh, Vietnam, I have a very good fr friend of mine who lived there for a year, I think, and told me that, yeah, maybe there are a few people that speak English, but not that much, not that many. Uh, but the Philippines, have you noticed how she did not hesitate one bit? She was like, yeah, Philippines number one. Bam. Vietnam, seven. South Korea. South Korean people, when they speak English, they have to overcome a lot of pronunciation obstacles. Number eight would be Thailand. Number nine, Japan. Number 10, China. But I think overall, See, Japan towards, towards the really bottom. Job with like learning English and pronouncing it. It's just, they're so close together, honestly. Actually, <laughs> just because people love to watch anime these days in America, mm -hmm. when people, speak with a Japanese accent. Guess which anime I've been re-watching, but the first time I watched it, I did not finish it entirely. That's why I decided to re-watch it. It's Naruto and uh, Naruto Shippuden, of course. So the first time I watched it, I was a lot younger. You know, it was around the time I came here to, uh, to Montreal and I watched it in uh, Japanese, subtitled in English. Uh, but now I'm watching it in English, subtitled in English. You know, at first it was very strange, very weird, but I've gotten used to it. And I'm towards the end. So now basically all the episodes are very new to me. You know, I haven't seen them. It's very exciting. But yeah, I'm a lot more into anime these days. <clears throat> People said, oh, wow, so you're so kawaii, like my favorite anime. Americans think that Japanese accents are really cute. I personally think that like, if someone is speaking to me in an Indian accent, I think like, oh, they must be like, oh, he's like a scientist or something. They sound really intelligent. <laughs> they must do something in like STEM or something. I personally, I really like the Cantonese accent. To me, it sounds really cool or something. I, I, I can't explain it, it just sounds really cool. I ranked it by fluency. I feel like people okay, in the there Philippines... You go. What's the standard of ranking? And she ranked it uh, by fluent, fluency. Uh, isn't it... I feel it's a little awkward, this video, because she's the only one speaking, man. And there are, what, five other Asian ladies sitting next to her, just listening to her and watching her. They can't, like, talk as well, give their opinion or something. It's a little, it's a little awkward. No, like every like, English word. And the way that they pronounce it, like she pronounces just like the American style. So to me, Philippines is the closest to yeah. American style pronunciation. The big, uh, not it's not a problem obviously, but the thing I feel like that the Filipinos make the most uh, errors with when they speak uh, English, it's pr uh, pronouns, you know, he and she. Singapore English. So sorry, Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's subjective to how one is being upbringing is dependable on that factor. I feel like maybe the ranking is because that the entire nation, like everyone really uses English a lot, like across every races, Chinese, Malay, Indian, or any other races, our common language is English. I think that's why they rank the proficiency level as that's that. That's pretty good, man. And like other countries, they might use often their own languages. Even if you grow up in Singapore, if you learn science, mathematics, you know, your mathematics. history subjects, all is in English. <laughs> That's why maybe they rank it as 
as such, but it's still dependable on individuals. <laughs> I feel She's like my so pronunciation is not the best. I don't want to reason why my pronunciation is not the best, but I have a bad pronunciation, so I'm so sorry. It's not bad. It's but not bad. You. Thank you. Thanks for improving my English. <laughs> I think it's because the main language that they use is really English. Like even the language that they use in the entire education system is English. Mm. I know that in, for example, countries like Hong Kong, if you're not in international school, you'll use Chinese Mandarin for. No, not really. There are two kinds of schools. Um, yeah. One is we use English to teach our mathematics or history and one is using Cantonese to teach yeah. this subject. Mm. Yeah, it depends. But for us it's the entire is all yeah, English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even like we have a Chinese school, right? There's a Chinese school in Singapore but they use English to teach too. <laughs> Maybe that's why I put on but I'm so sorry. I, love I like the way she's dressed. English is how I would imagine people think like a Chinese accent sounds like, at least in America. And so actually I can understand everything. What is your mother tongue? My mother tongue is Chinese. Okay, I hear a lot of like Mandarin influence when, when she speaks, so I think, d yeah, as you said, depending on the mother tongue, Singlish can actually be different. I never even thought about that. Thank you for explaining that too. It makes That's sense. That's all a comfort too. Yeah. Philippines. The Tagalog accent in English can be seen as a little bit more like aggressive sounding. The Filipino, the Tagalog <laughs> accent for English is very, it's really clear, but... Aggressive? I don't think it's aggressive at all. It's more elongated. No, 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 You know, it's more elong... It's, it's... I don't feel it's aggressive. On the contrary, I feel like it's a little mellow, you know? Yeah, I don't know what she's saying. Also, I know a lot of people like in Korea go to the Philippines to learn English. Mm -hmm. And so because of, of that, I feel like Philippines has a really good reputation for knowing English yep. and teaching English. Even though like Singapore has a lot of high ranking, I think that Philippines should be <laughs> higher than that one, but Singapore also takes a lot of like money and time in learning English too, so it's difficult to truly rank it, I think. It's because Singapore, um, I, I used to work in a company, I'm from the HR, human resource, so whenever there's an applicant and you're working for or you're applying for a multinational company, they would give you I also really like how she is dressed, man, the Filipina. It's so proper. I mean, she has a tie. She's looking great. Their ranking of, you know, the English proficiency grade. So I think growing up, they are preparing themselves to have those um, examinations to assess their English. So, yeah, and I also think that Singapore English um, varies because they are following the British English. So yeah, in the yeah. Philippines, for the Philippines, we basically American follow English. the American English. That's what English, I wanted to say. Yeah, you can watch tell all the television, uh, mm -hmm. the shows, the movie. You can tell by her pronunciation that it's more Americanized, you know, or Canada or whatever. You know, it does not sound British at all. It's in English, so we don't need the subtitle. Uh, most of our subjects were taught in English, in rather than Filipino or tag Tagalog. So yeah, I think that influenced the English speaking proficiency. Is it me or this girl also reminds me physically and even the way she speaks a little bit of Kizi Tandingan? I don't know. Yeah, Filipinos, yeah. Malaysia. I think Malaysia, it depends on how the person grow up. Some people, they come from an English speaking family. Some people, they are uh, they speak Malay at home, some people speak Chinese at home. For my case, I went to a Chinese speaking school when I was in primary school. So I think it really... See, she speaks very well. Her English is wonderful, but her accent to me does not sound Malaysian. I mean, I don't know what uh, a Malaysian English accent is like, but to me, it sounds more like a, a Chinese person speaking English depends on the environment. And we also learn science and maths in English. 
but most, I think the rest of the subjects we learn in Malay. And I also think Malay. that I kind of agree that Singapore has a good command of English because I have studied with the textbook of Singapore oh, before. Interesting. So I think, yeah mostly like the environment so every individual is different oh, Malaysian for sure. English actually this is the first time I've ever met a Malaysian person <laughs> mm -hmm. I think so honestly your English skill yep. is basically perfect. that's what so, I said that's what I could, said you could easily live she speaks in the States very well. and have no problems nice. actually I think all of you guys could yeah <laughs> exactly that's what I was about to it's say like she's using a lot of the proper like trying to use as much proper articles as possible mm -hmm. like they and the at on in that's what really stands stands out to me. When I hear like someone from like Korea or Japan or China speaking English, they don't have those articles in their languages and so it's hard to remember to use those when speaking English. And so to me like you really learned like in a proper proper English style. Like you can tell she studied <laughs> the language English. You know, because there are some people who went to school to study the language, you know, English, and there are some people who learned it by just communicating with uh, people in their environment. I did both. I'm lucky enough to have done both. I studied it first in school while I was speaking it with people in my environment. And then when I came to Canada, <laughs> I, uh, I got into a relationship with, uh, you know, my... my, my my ex, so my ex co-host as well, I'm Angel, who spoke primarily in English. So, you know, I didn't have a choice. I would like, you know, just respond in English. So my English got a lot better thanks to her. And because we would speak in English, I would say 75% of the time, even though we both also uh, speak French fluently, you know. In Hong Kong, we actually learn English when we are in kindergarten and actually there are two types of schools yeah. primary school secondary school two and types. there are Chinese school and there English is like, school so in English it's like they put an H in every word when they speak in English you know two times two times we will learn mathematics science or others and other subjects or by English and in Chinese school just in Cantonese. Uh, so I think people graduate from English school can speak better in English. I think Hong Kong people Makes can sense. speak simple English, simple words. So I think there is no obstacles for us to. Yo, I don't know about you, but the Filipina looks so cute. She looks like a doll with her big eyes. You know, and her, what are they called? The hair like this? A, a bang? Bangs? Bangs, I think. Speak English. Sometimes if I've met a lot of like Hong Kong Canadian people, so to me, ah. <laughs> when I think like Hong Kong English, I think, oh, it's like Canadian style. <laughs> and also UK influence. So I always think of like a connection between like Hong Kong and the UK. I know that Hong Kong used to be colonized by the UK. So it makes... I don't know what she's talking about, man. I mean, Canadian English and Amer American English are basically uh, exactly the same. There are a couple of letters that here Canadians pronounce differently. It's the O, I think. But that's it. That's it. And some expressions uh, are also different. But, like, the accent is very similar. Like... You can't compare the Canadian English to the UK English. Those are very different, you know. But uh, Canadian to Eng to American, they're, they're basically identical. It makes sense that it would follow that root of language, like the accent-wise and vocabulary-wise. Uh, and also, we watch a lot of American dramas and mm. movies. Yeah. And also, we speak Cantonese, so we mix all of it. So the accent. Yeah. <laughs> accent turns more American. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, America for the win. <laughs> and here in Montreal, we speak Franglish, man. It's a mix of French and English. And me, in my head, it's a mix of Arabic, English, and French. <laughs> India. A lot of people, like in America, if you have a problem with like your Samsung oh device God. or any kind of like the technological stereo, device, you call the call center thing. and it's someone from India. And so a lot of times 
We Americans Cliché. are first introduced to the Indian accent if they have an issue with their refrigerator. Oh my god, I, I can't believe she's saying this. <laughs> in Florida, actually an Indian family like purchased That's sad. a bunch of Burger Kings and so it's kind of sad if your first encounter with an Indian person is because you have an issue with one of your um uh, you know, your your equipment, basically. That's sad. Just hearing more and more of the accent. I, I watched a little bit of like the, like the, the Bollywood, <laughs> the Bollywood movies. And so I'm like, aha. But usually like a stereotype of the, like the Indian accent is like someone who's going to be working as a scientist or working helping you fix like a device. Why is she even or, talking about this? You know, someone at your favorite Indian restaurant. To me, it sounds like it's a uh, it's proper English. For that makes me a little so uncomfortable. Like, focus on like the proper pronunciation. But then I, it sounds like the, the vowels and the consonants are a little bit quickly, more, more quickly spoken. And so actually, to me, I like that more because I'm from people really they speak, speak fast. slowly and it takes a, a long Indians time. Indians speak fast. Actually, we have a lot of languages. It's 200 plus. So mm -hmm. no blame to Indians because they're already learning three languages from childhood, like from the kindergarten. So it's a lot of pressure uh, for yeah. languages and for other subjects like science, maths, and uh, like social science, everything. And also languages are really important for us because we know that further we have to study in a foreign country or something. So on kids, it's a lot of pressure. So I would rather say, don't focus on the accent, just go for the study. Absolutely. <laughs> because we are already start giving our best. And also every individual city has its own accent in English. I can understand this because I am from different city. My friend is from different city. We have a different accent in English. So I can understand the things now. So yeah, it's okay. I completely agree with what she says, man. I mean, India on its own, the country of India feels like a planet. That's how how different it is from uh, city to city in India or just from region to region. It, we are not in the list. <laughs> yeah, they're already studying a lot. I don't know. It's, it's really hard to rank. I don't know. Americans are so used to speaking like one language. And so these ladies here, they speak two, three, four, five. <laughs> I speak like one and a half. And so <laughs> the way that they can learn all of these languages and still speak English probably better than I can technically. Yep. I speak a lazy form of English actually. So they, it's really impressive. And I really wish that I can give you guys all of the same ranking. So. I think that, I really think that Philippines and India are kind of like still at the top. Yeah. At the same time, why do, why do we have to have rank? <laughs> why is ranking necessary? I don't know. I, I really lean towards like Indian accent is more attractive. See, if you based the, if you based the ranking on uh, the ladies that we heard here speaking English, I would say Philippines number one and then Malaysia number two. Her English was so freaking good. And then perhaps uh the, the the lady on the far right so cantonese then india and then the woman in the center you know her pronunciation was a little bit rough but i mean if you pay attention you focus you can actually understand her out of everyone here. So wait. So today ah, I try wait, to wait, wait. rank everyone from their country based on their fluency and pronunciation in English. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. We will see you soon. Bye. See a comment. See they have that ka 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 Filipinos instead of ka, and they can't pronounce the k. You know, sometimes they do pronounce it. And I'm like, okay, sure. When I'm trying to imitate their accent, you know. I, I'm never sure if I should pronounce the K as a K or a K, you know? But I guess it depends from person to person. So, uh, let me rank, uh, let me choose the color black. Yeah, so, Philippines, number one. And then I said Malaysia, number two. Then I said her, number three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Do you agree with me? <laughs> I think it's pretty accurate. 
uh, you can let me know in the comment section below uh, your rankings you know just top five just for the girls that were uh, in the video no need to to mention uh, the top 10 ranking but definitely Philippines is number one I think that's uh, a given you know um, so yeah there you have it and I cannot wait uh, to experience Tagalog especially, especially Tagalog and uh, and you know Filipino speaking English as well when I'm in the Philippines and I want to pick up some 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 Tagalog sentences you know I want to be more fluent I want to be more comfortable with the language at least at least I want to be able to understand when people speak you know now when I react to videos and they only speak in Tagalog it just does not bother me at all because my ears have gotten used to Tagalog you know I feel completely comfortable it doesn't even at first it would bother me because I'm like ah, I don't understand it but my ears have gotten used to picking up a few Tagalog words here and there that I understand but also English words because you know they speak Taglish most of the time but I want to become I want to be able to understand Tagalog even if I don't speak it I want to be able to understand it that is why I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be traveling to the Philippines uh, not just this time you know but often 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 so that I can you know experience the Philippines and get more comfortable with uh, the Tagalog language uh, and there you go let me know in the comment section below your thoughts marami maraming salamat po and of course if you found value in this video do not hesitate to check out my other reaction videos right here